Today we look at a little guy who's been making the rounds. This is the UV5R Mini Review, coming right up. The UV5R Mini is a tiny little radio that packs quite a punch. The dual band version allows you to transmit on 70 centimeter UHF and 2 meter VHF ham bands, while the GMRS version allows you to transmit on all GMRS channels, including repeater channels that you can customize via chirp. The closest radio in size that I have to the UV5R Mini would be the TDH3 from TID Radio, and here you can see it side by side. Comparing it to my favorite GMRS radio and hacked ham radio, the GM30 from Radioddity, the size difference stands out a bit more. Finally, next to a UV5R with an extended battery. The Mini features a 1.44 inch color screen that's pleasant to look at, but as usual, not as easy to see in bright sunlight. It's by no means impossible, you may just have to shade it a bit with your hand. Both versions feature 999 channel memory, which I've never found a use for on the GMRS side of things, but I'm glad it's there. Both boast 5 watts of maximum output. I tested this for myself, and I'm happy to say, both versions of the radio delivered exactly that on high power, a full 5 watts of output. On low power, which by the way is your only other option, there is no mid setting, each was able to deliver 2 watts. Both feature Bluetooth programming via a not great app which I've covered in other videos, convenient USB-C charging, dual push to talk buttons, dual watch, dual standby, a customizable side key, stopwatch function, channel slash frequency clone, Vox hands free mode, and of course scan mode. I will also add my two cents here and say that both feature Baofeng's updated menu system which I have found to be a pleasure to use. Bravo! Both versions can receive FM broadcast, NOAA, airband, and UHF VHF ham frequencies. But of course, only the ham version can transmit on the VHF UHF ham bands. The ham version can also transmit on GMRS frequencies. Airband performance was on par with the TDH3 when connected to my Slim Jim J-Pole antenna in my attic. But that points out one of the most limiting factors with the Mini, or any radio really, the included antenna. I've never found the pack-in rubber duck antennas to be worth anything when trying to receive airband. So keep that in mind. Unless you're right on top of the airport, your reception will be severely limited by that pack-in antenna. Now this flavor of UV5R is simple to program from the front panel using the updated menu system found in many Baofeng radios today. That's a huge upside for those of us who have to make changes to frequencies on the fly in the field. The diminutive size of the UV5R Mini and UV5G Mini make them extremely pocketable until you attach the belt clip, which makes them a little too thick to ride in a pocket. A word of advice, don't attach the belt clip to both batteries that you get with the radio, only put it on one unless you're absolutely certain that you don't want a radio without a belt clip. Because once it's on, it's never coming off. I and others have tried to remove it and the plastic lever that you know unlocks that tooth to slide it off just snaps. Now the way I did it was I put them on the GMRS versions since I will be most likely handing them to family members, but I kept them off of the ham versions since I would be the only one using those. Either way, just know the belt clip isn't removable once you get it on there. Also, due to its size, both versions are currently limited to a 1600 milliamp hour battery. Right now, there is no option to install an extended battery. However, it's certainly feasible to take something like the NUE 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank with you and just recharge the battery as necessary. That would certainly get the job done. I also think the UV5R 5G Mini has an aesthetic appeal of being a low profile radio. You can put this in a coat pocket, a purse, a laptop bag, or briefcase with a coil up signal stick and have a very capable radio ready to go. For backpackers where carried weight is a huge concern, this may be a better option than other radios. 
A lot has come out about the spectral purity of these radios, but just to state it here, the ham version was put on a tiny SA Ultra with 40 dB of attenuation between the radio and the unit. That attenuation was accounted for in the settings and a line drawn at negative 16.02 on the graph to let us know where the 25 microwatt line would be. Any spurious emissions must be below 40 dB up from our fundamental and below the blue line. Here you see the UV5R Mini passes the FCC standard for spectral purity, no problem. The GMRS UV5G was not tested as it is up to the manufacturer to do so, unlike the amateur version where the responsibility falls on the operator. Signal both to and from the radios is pretty good. I had no issues being understood on local repeaters and signal reports from fellow hams was good to excellent. Whiskey 3 Mike Bravo Tango doing a radio check on the Baofeng Mini UV5R radio to radio. This is Whiskey 3 Mike Bravo Tango. I'll be clear. Now, obviously this isn't some super heterodyne HT, but you're not paying those prices here. In fact, since they come in a pair, the cost works out to less than $25 a unit, which really isn't bad. At this point in ham radio development and innovation, I can't see a reason to recommend the original UV5R anymore. Not when this exists. Yeah, you might pay a little less for a UV5R, but it's not packing the features of the UV5R Mini. For that reason, I'm awarding this radio the Cheap Radio to Buy in 2025 award. I plan on updating this at the end of next year. We'll see if the UV5R Mini and UV5G Mini are able to hold on to the title, or if someone else becomes king of the molehill. <laughs> I forgot something very important. It's got a flashlight. If you'd like to pick up a pair of the UV5R Minis, I've left an affiliate link to Radiotity in the video description below. So what do you think about the UV5R Mini? Might make a great gift for the ham in your life if you're on a tight budget, and I'm guessing that could be most of us, right? As always, respectful comments and questions are welcomed, even if we disagree. I'm Matt, and remember, when it comes to tech, I've got you covered.